Hello there. Well, thanks for joining us. Today, we are heading back to 20,000 BC to create some cave art. And this would be a great project to do with kids. But before we start, if you love art, then don't forget to have a look at our webpage at www.montmart.net because we have lots more art lessons there, as well as links to our Facebook page, Instagram, and our art club, The Creative Connection. Let's make some cave art. So the first thing we need to do is to emulate the surface of a cave wall onto our canvas. And we do that by applying sand and we adhere the sand with some craft glue. Now this is a Montmartre craft glue or PVA in one litre and this is a much more economical way to buy it. PVA glue is water based and emits no odour so it is very good in a classroom situation. I'm using a float to disperse the glue but a large paintbrush could be used also. Take the glue to the edges of the canvas. Our glue is on and I'm quite happy with that texture. The next step is to put the sand on. And this is sand that I got from the hardware. So I just sprinkle this over. Obviously with sand involved, you can expect a little mess. So take precautions of covering any furnishings or a better idea might be to do this step outside. So I've left that overnight and now for the messy part. The sand that I used was wash sand intended for use in sand pits. It's better to use this type as it is generally free from inclusions and any organic matter. You can sweep up the cast sand and keep it for another project. Now all the loose sand has been removed and cleaned up, the next step is I'm going to add some colours to make my cave wall look more realistic. I'm using the soft pastels in the 36 piece pack. So let's get these colours on. This lesson is based on the cave system in Lascaux. The cave walls from my research were a limestone made up of whites, yellow ochres, oxides and greys. It helps with the realism to suggest the variation of colours. Use a soft clean brush to soften the tones. I've downloaded the accompanying PDF and this has four animals and some Neolithic symbols. I'm going to start with the pony and I'm going to use a charcoal stick to draw up my pony and this is pretty much what the cavemen would have used too. This first painting is the Dun Horse. This is outlined in black stick charcoal and although my horse is quite large, the original was much larger and it was painted on the ceiling of the cave. The original artists would have had to erect some sort of a scaffolding to paint this. Archaeologists also found oil lamps that they used to light up the area so they could work. And the original painting was done around 15,000 BC. In fact, there is roughly 600 works of art spread out over the main subcaves in the complex. Once the black charcoal is on, I block in the area with an umber pastel and then go over this with a red oxide pastel. These colours would have been very similar to those that our Paleolithic artist friends used. I then block in the underside of the horse with a light yellow ochre colour and soften it all with a clean dry brush. This next painting is affectionately known as the red cow with a black collar. Again, lay the outline in with charcoal. The whole thing about the paintings at Lascaux is how anatomically correct they were in regards to a lot of other cave art. I have, however, noticed a recurring theme where the head is portrayed smaller than one would expect. Anyway, I'm trying to depict them as closely as I can to the originals. So once the outline is in, I block in the head. The Paleolithic people who painted these animals obviously held them in very high regard. And this was the most important way to honour them. They were not only a source of food and for hides to sleep on, they were holy animals that were probably worshipped. 
I block in the cowl with a red oxide pastel and then soften it with a brush. This next fine creature is thought to be a Megalosaurus and long since extinct. Obviously they were appreciated greatly. One thing I will say is on viewing the photos of the original paintings, many overlapped as they were added over many thousands of years. So try to add them randomly so it doesn't look overly contrived. Add those wonderful antlers. Refer to the PDF for guidance. Once the head is blocked in, I add some burnt umber into the body. The pigment originally used was the same. Once this is in, I soften it with a brush. This next painting is the Black Bull. I really like the original painting as it's quite cute. An interesting fact about the cave system is there were seven areas and each area depicted a different order of animals. The Black Bull here is found in the Hall of the Bulls. There was also even a chamber of the feline. Unfortunately, I ran out of space on my canvas cave wall, but I would have loved to have drawn in a cave lion. I block in some red oxide over the body. I lay over some orange as the original bears this tone and then smooth it in with a brush. The next couple of creatures are Pacaris. The Pacari was a smallish relative of the pig. I lay the creature in, in silhouette form, with red oxide. I then add water to the pigment to make a paint. Paleolithic artists used this as well as animal fat and egg white as a paint medium, and it has stood the test of time very well. The last creature is a partially finished horse. Again, I overlap it a little to help with the random natural placement that took place. Okay, well I might leave the animals at that. The next thing I'm going to put on is the symbols. And there's a few of these in the PDF too. So let's get these symbols on. The interesting thing about the symbols used in the caves is that similar symbols have been found all over the world and probably mean a similar thing. Unfortunately, it is impossible for us to know exactly what each one means due to a lack of evidence and the many pitfalls associated with trying to understand the prehistoric mindset with a modern mind. Maybe our friends were leaving a gift for us. Maybe they were trying to tell us something. See you next time.